talk about that, y'all. I got cut off. This is the book of uh, Amos, chapter 7, starting at verse 15. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said unto me, Go prophesy unto my people Israel. Okay? That's what the most I want to do. Who are who is Israel? You so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Y'all are the real people, man. If you don't believe me, go into the go into uh um if you go to um the book of Revelation, I think it is, it talks about let me see, hold on. Before I say it. The book of Revelation 1 and 14. You so called black Hispanics and Native Americans, man, are the real children of Israel. Alright? If you don't believe that Yahweh Shai, whom the Lord Him and called Jesus Christ was a so called black man, go to the book of Revelation 1 and 14. Alright? It talks about it. This is the book of Revelation 1 and 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. It didn't say his skin was white as snow. It didn't say his face was white as snow. It said his, his head and hair. His head and his hair, not his face, not his whole body. His head and his hair were white like wool, like snow. His eyes were flame of fire. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's just go to uh, Revelation 1 and 14. I had to Google it. Revelation 1 and 14. Okay, let's go down to 15. And his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brass is brown. As they burn in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. We all know black folks are loud. That's just my people. I can say that. All right. But we got to feed the flock, man. Getting back to the to the lesson. We have to feed the flock. Yahweh Shah made a commandment. If you love me, if you love me, keep my commandment. That's a command that the Most High not only gave to Simon Peter, but also to the elect, man. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and you Native Americans. Okay? This is the book of uh, Hebrews. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 12. All right, the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you of an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living power. Okay? If you take your hand out the plow, out the plow, and depart from the Heavenly Father, man, hey man, you're gonna get dealt with by the Heavenly Father, man. You know? The most it's like a marriage, man. When you come into this thing, you you're like a wife until Yahweh Shah, who in the world anyway called Jesus Christ, man. Alright? And when you divorce him, when you step away, when you step out, he's gonna punish you. Alright? Think about if a woman you love for so many for so many years, and you put your heart and soul into trying to please that woman, and they just walk away from you. How you gonna feel about that? Okay, this ain't no homo shit. But the Yahweh Shai, who in the world enemy called Jesus Christ, loves his flock, man. And when you step out, when you take your hand off the plow, man, that makes him angry. All right, just like it makes a man angry when his woman cheats on him, man. You know. The most I doesn't like that, man. Going back into the world, man, that's like an adulterous affair, man. You know? You don't want to go back to that, man. You don't want to go back to being a whore, man. All right? Let's go to the book of, um, the book of Luke. This is the book of Luke, chapter 14, starting at verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out 
into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Okay? Now, didn't Yahweh say, Shay, in scriptures, I will make you fishers of, among men? Okay? If, we, if you want to be a fisher among men, you got to go where the, where the people are, where the fish are, and throw out that line, man. All right? Let the Most High use you as a fishing pole, man. What is our fishing pole today? The scriptures. The draw people in. That's the bait. That's the hook, line, and sinker. That's everything. That's the hook. That's the bait. That's the uh, tackle box. Uh, the scriptures are everything you need, man. You know, that's the net. You know, you got to cast that, that net. Those scriptures out there, man, pull people in. Let's read this verse again. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled, man. All right? When you when you go out fishing and you cast out that net, you if you get like a, a bunch of fish on that net and it's full, that's a good payday for you, man. Your family's going to eat and you can sell that fish, man, and make some bread. All right? And then you can pay your, the men who helped you a little bit extra, man. You know, and keep going. All right? That's why it's important for us to feed the flock, man. To draw brothers in. All right? This is the book of uh, Hebrews. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 6. Oh, so like, yeah, 6, uh, starting at 5. Uh, let's start at, um, let me start at 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened to have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit. Let me read that again. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of heaven and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of Yahweh and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance seeing they crucify to themselves to the son of Yahweh a fresh and put and put him to an open shame so if you if you go if you take your hand off the plow man you putting your Howard Shah on, on shame. All right? You're making a shame of your Howard Shah. You're embarrassing the Howard Shah when you do that, man. All right? Now, yes, it does say in scriptures a righteous man does fall seven times. All right? Now, you have some brothers that probably fell out and they came back. They came to the realization that, look, I fucked up. I need to come back. All right? Now, as long as you repent and you know you work that out between, that's between you and the Lord. You know, you make amends with the Lord and you come back. Okay, that's different. But if you just stay out there, you putting your hours out of shame, man. You know, it's like a woman, um, uh, 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 the daughter of a family, okay? The daughter, the father's daughter. If she goes out there and make a horror for, of herself, that gives the father a bad name. That gives the, uh, if she goes out there and makes a horror of herself, and she's married, that gives the husband a bad name. And that's like us, man. We come into this shoe, taste, taste, we taste the, uh, the, the, the goodness of it, and then we go back in the world and stay there. No, nah, man, we're making a horror of ourselves, and we're making Yahweh Shah look bad, man. We're embarrassing him, all right? And I pray that the Most High keeps the spirit in me not to do that, man, all right? Let's go to the book of James. Well, actually, let's go to the book of Hebrews, we shot the 11. Hebrews chapter 11, uh, starting at verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. And that's why you see a lot of people for, uh, take their hand off the plow. Okay? Because they, like, they have lost faith. Okay? That lamp is burned out. They don't have that oil. The oil is gone. You know? The body, is, in scriptures it says the body is willing, but the no, but the spirit is willing, but the body's weak. Okay? When your spirit comes to the point where it's not willing anymore, you're done. 
you done. That's why it's important, man, to stay faithful. Okay? Stay faithful in this shoot, man. All right? Because the most I can take you out, man, if you don't. All right? And like I said in the beginning, certain brothers have different levels of faith, man. What did the scripture say? As long as you have the faith of a mustard seed, some brothers may have the faith the size of, uh, some brothers in the truth may have faith the size of mountains, man. You know? All right, let's go to the book of, um, James, well, let's go to the book of, the, of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is acceptance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. The one, in my opinion, the one of the main reasons why our brothers fall out is because they lose vision. They lose sight of what they're fighting for, okay? They lose it. And when they see that their work is not paying off, they go back into the world and work for Esau, man. You know, they be like, oh, it's easier to work for Esau than to work for the Lord because they're living in the now. As a prophet, you have to look in the, in, in, in the future. Okay? What, what does the word prophesy mean? To tell before. Okay? To tell before. The prophets know what's coming to America, man. The prophets know destruction is coming to America. All right? And just because Joe Biden got in office doesn't mean everything is going to be all, all easy now. You're going to see upwards of the people. Okay? You're going to see upwards of, of Trump supporters, man. Trump himself is getting ready to upward, man. You know? And you got people and militia groups backing him up. All right? So don't think everything is going to be easy now. It's not. Okay? Don't think that. I would have thought something like this would have happened during the time when President Obama got elected. All right? But now, nah, man, you're you going to see some bloodshed. It's coming. All right? It's coming. What did the scripture say? Do it, Terry, it shall surely come. Let's get that as a matter of fact. Do it, Terry, it shall surely come. Do it, Terry. Okay. This is the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, it shall surely come. It will not tarry. Okay? So the destruction, death and destruction is getting ready to come. These militia groups are getting ready to rise up right now, man. All right? These devils are about to reveal themselves, man. All right? What does it say in Scripture? His words were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. Okay? Now, a lot of these militia groups saying they, they want to protect America. They want to protect America. Nah, it's against you, Israel. They want to protect themselves against you. All right? Who is the you? You. You so-called black man. You so-called uh, Native American. You so called Hispanic. All right? Because they know things are about to get bad. All right? They're going to have to fight for food. That's why you have these uh, militia groups getting guns right now, man. Bidding up their ammo. He was given a sword. All right? Esau was given a sword, man. You can't beat Esau his own game, man. That's why uh, we need the Lord on our side, man. To give us spiritual power. All right? And that's why it's important to, to leave your hand on the plow, man, to become one of those elect men, all right? To become one of those men that's fighting for truth, for him, for Yahweh Shah, man, you know? If you believe in something, your actions will show it, okay? If you have faith, your actions will show it, man. You're going to be out in the highways and the hedges uh, pushing this truth, Okay? It doesn't matter. I mean, the Most High will put the Spirit a lot. If you allow the Most High to put that Spirit in you and don't reject it, hey, He will give you the knowledge and wisdom and understanding to push out this truth, man. All right? Let's go to the book of uh, John. 